Hey there, remember me? The story behind is finally back after a hiatus I did not expect to take as long as it has. Here's the short version of what happened and why it was so long. And I promise this has everything to do with today's topic. I started editing and writing show notes for other podcasts on the side before I found out in October that I was going to be let go from my full-time job. When I found that out, it was the week I was gearing up for episode 100, so on top of learning a musical number, I also made the decision to turn helping people with their podcasts into a full-time business in the new year. So I spent the majority of my time creating ePodcast Productions. And if you're interested in learning more about that, you can visit the website at epodcastproductions.com. But you're here to learn some history, right? Besides, for those who are new to the story behind and are listening to the back catalog, it's like I never left. Although none of this would be possible had it not been for the subject of today's episode. I'm your host, Emily Prokop, and this is the story behind The Pink Slip. But first, a quick message. I know I said I was getting into the episode, and I will, but I wanted to take a quick moment to thank you for waiting so long, and also to tell you what came up during my hiatus. I was contacted by a publisher to write a book based on the podcast. That means come fall 2018, if I get everything in on time, the story behind book will hopefully be available at your favorite book retailer, as well as online. I'm so excited to be sharing stories from past episodes, future episodes, and stories that are going to be exclusive to the book. But I'll talk more about that when the book is available as it gets closer. For the majority of my research about the pink slip, one name kept coming up, and that's Peter Liebold, a curator at the Smithsonian Institution's National Museum of American History in Washington, D.C., who has been searching for the origin of the pink slip, only to come across several dead ends, unfortunately. There was one story that placed the origin back to the early days of the Ford Motor Company, when supervisors put white papers in cubby holes of workers who did a good job, and pink papers in other cubby holes as a sign to those employees that they were on their way out the door. However, the originator of that tale was a management consultant who heard the story in college and couldn't actually verify its accuracy. But the story was passed from him to numerous others. It's also noted that in 1904, warnings were issued to typographers on pink pieces of paper, and if a typographer received too many, he would be fired. Another reference to them was a magazine who used pink paper to write their rejection letters. And an Atlanta newspaper published a line in 1906 that says, There's nothing like a prospective pink slip to fill the brawny athlete with zest and ginger. The Oxford English Dictionary referenced one of the earliest instances of being used coming from a pulp novel called Covering the Look in Corner by Gilbert Patton about baseball in 1915. When it was mentioned by a character saying, and have Murphy hand me the pink slip tonight. So while we may never find the original company known for using pink slips, the phrase remains in our lexicon. Want to know something funny about the paperwork I got when I was let go? It actually included a paper with the title Pink Slip written on it with quotation marks around it. And the paper was white, but it's funny that it's not just slang, but an actual term that's used. Back in 2008 and 2009, when the U.S. experienced a rise in unemployment, pink slip parties became fashionable the day of mass layoffs, where discounted pink champagne and pink cocktails were served, and some parties even evolved to organizers inviting recruiters. Luckily, since 2010, unemployment has steadily decreased and these parties aren't as common. So even though we may not know about the first pink slip in existence, the phrase is generally known throughout the U.S., while in Germany, being fired is referred to as getting the blue letter, and in the French military, those being let go are given a yellow paper. But maybe pink slip has nothing to do with the color of the paper, but the word pink actually means to cut ties or literally pierce or stab, like in the term pinking shears. Pink also has the definition of piercing by means of ridicule. And one of the stories told about why the paper is pink was that so other employees could plainly see who was getting the axe. And as I said, the paperwork I got wasn't actually pink, 
but I did get the paperwork in a bright red folder to carry to my desk, so that was a bit embarrassing. So you guys think you got a winner there, huh? That's right. Yeah, well, it takes more than a coat of paint to make it at Thunder Road. Oh, yeah? You guys ain't thinking about changing your mind, are you? No way. Good, because we're racing for pinks. Pinks? Pinks, you punk! Pink slips! Ownership papers! <laughs> Even though we may never know the true origin of the term pink slip for the piece of paper given to terminated employees, we do know the origin of the term when it comes to car titles, as it's used in the movie Grease, as you heard. That particular pink slip came from the color of car titles in California up until 1981, or 1988, depending on the source. Car titles were a small 4 by 5 inch piece of paper until California switched to a larger rainbow title, which was harder to forge. It has since changed back to being pink, but now with a blue border. Fun story? Well, maybe not fun, but when I first watched Grease, I didn't know that fact. So when they said that line about racing for pinks for ownership, I thought it meant ownership of the pink ladies before finding out the reference was to a car title. Thank goodness. Information for this episode was sourced from Esquire, Mental Floss, The Atlantic, and more links which can be found in the show notes at thestorybehindpodcast.com. Want to talk more about this or past episodes, find out about future episodes, enter giveaways, and more? Join me and other trivia buffs in the Story Behind discussion group on Facebook, and there will be a link in the show notes to take you there. This episode was brought to you by the Story Behind executive producers who support the show through the Patreon page at patreon.com slash the story behind. Stargate Pioneer from gunnageek.com, Matt from the One Word Go Show, Linguist Sam, Diane and Denise from History Goes Bump, Dan Brennick from Netflix and Swill, Jared Dunham from the historyfile.net, Heather Welch from Sunshine and Power Cuts, Jason Bryant from Matt Talk Online, Gerald and Andy from Two Peas on a Podcast, Bandrew Scott from the Bandrew Says Podcast and Podcastage YouTube channel, Adam from Everyone Has a Podcast, Barry G, Nick and Justin from Epic Film Guys, Jeremy Collins from Podcast We Listen To. Oh, and congratulations to Jeremy on his engagement to Dina Marie from the Twisted Philly Podcast. And newest executive producers, the North Omaha History Podcast and Dave Jackson from the School of Podcasting. I also want to offer my deepest condolences to the family of former executive producer Scott Smith from the Recovering from Religion podcast. Thanks for listening. And in the French military, personnel are given... Personnel is? Is. Hey, Google. Is personnel singular or plural? On the website for Pi.com, they say, the plural personnel is not used because this word is a collective noun, i.e. a singular noun that can be treated as plural. It is. Like that. Thanks, Google. Still sounds weird. So even though we may know about this. It's okay, Emily. We could do this. And some parties even in, and some parties even evolved to organizers. Info- oh, I'm rusty. Oh.